بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أي الله بتف الله continuing on in our study of Sheikh Abdul Razak's uh, short treatise interacting with non-Muslim parents a guide for the new Muslim. In fact, this topic is so important, it's a reminder for us that those of us who have embraced Islam, and all, all of us as Muslims, can benefit from them, benefit from this treatise, because the issue, the topic is so important that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has coupled this right of the parents with the right of worshiping Him and Him alone and emphasized it in several places in the Qur'an, as we already mentioned, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِشَيْنِ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Worship Allah alone. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded for us. He says, وَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِشَيْنِ Worship Allah alone and do not associate partners with Him. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And be kind and dutiful to one's parents. There Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has coupled worshipping him and him alone, giving him his right and negating shirk, polytheism. And along with that, he has then also commanded, so it's two commandments in that verse, and be dutiful to one's parents. So, Muslims in general, and in fact non-Muslims, can benefit from this. To give their parents their rights. Be kind and gentle to your parents because they struggled with you. The mother carried you for nine months and struggled and toiled. The father hopefully spent upon you. And likewise the mother as well and cared for you and help to raise you and taught you the difference between that which is right and that which is wrong. So they have rights and a high status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if they worship Him and Him alone. So the Shaykh said, there is no doubt that the one who is new to Islam is in dire need to be taught the religion and given direction in this area such that his interaction with his parents will be upon clarity and knowledge. This must be based upon the religion of Allah, the blessed and exalted, not an inclination towards what he thinks is from the religion of Allah, the blessed and exalted. And as a result, he errs wronging himself and he interacts with his parents in an evil manner. And this is very true, Habatifillah. Many of us have experienced this. I personally, when I embraced Islam, I was very harsh with my parents. I, and at the time, I was living with them. And I did not instead invite them with kindness and gentleness and show that I was a better person and more obedient to them. But instead, I said, you know, why is this pork is in the refrigerator? Why is there alcohol in the refrigerator? And things like this, worrying about trying to enforce halal and haram upon them without knowledge, without wisdom, without uh, kindness, and without showing them that Islam is not based, that is, that, those are parts of Islam, things that Islam is prohibited, but that is not going to negate you being a Muslim. But I didn't go with the most important things, was showing them that there is only one God worthy of worship and that he should be worshipped alone and that Muhammad Ibn Abdullah or Ibn Abdullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his last prophet and messenger instead of focusing on the Shahada and, and, and inviting them with kindness and wisdom instead of throwing it down their throats they're my elders they know many things that we didn't know but instead, because of our lack of knowledge and zeal, we often make an error in this uh, manner and in this matter. 
Allah the Exalted explains in the Noble Quran the necessary interaction between the Muslim child and the non-Muslim parents. This can be found in Surah Al-Ankabut when Allah the Blessed and Exalted said, and we have enjoined on man goodness to parents. But if they strive to make you join with me in worship, anything as a partner of which you have no knowledge, then obey them not. Unto me is your return, and I shall tell you what you used to do. And those who believe and do righteous deeds, we will surely admit them amongst the righteous in paradise. This ayat, Habit of Allah, is absolutely so important because it gives us some kawai, some very important principles on how to interact with parents. And it lets us know that that obedience to them is not absolute. So that's very important that we understand. That it's not absolute. That meaning Allah has, has said in, in the verse himself, and we've enjoined on men good to parents. But if they strive to make you join with me in worship, anything is a partner of which you have no knowledge, then obey me not. Meaning if they call you to worship other than Allah, shirk, if they say we want you to worship Jesus, or we want you to worship uh, Gabriel, the angel Jibreel, or we want you to worship the sun or the moon or Buddha or uh, in any of the other deities that people worship, then in that you do not obey them. But what's absolutely imperative here is that we understand that does not negate obedience to them absolutely as well. Meaning, if they call you to worship a rock, for example, or your parents are Hindus and they say, we have many gods, we want you to worship, uh, you know, the elef, uh, the cow is sacred, you know, venerate the cow. Or they say the rats are sacred or whatever the deity that is worshipped. And they call you to that. You do not obey them. You cannot go and, and worship those things. But you still have an obligation to be kind and gentle to them, respectful of them and obey them in other things which are good. That's imperative. Some people believe, believe falsely, that when their parents call them to shirk or something like this, that they can no longer have ties with them, that they cut them off, that they uh, disrespect them. No, that doesn't give you a license, a license to ill, as they say that doesn't give you a license to be disobedient to your parents and disrespectful to your parents. But rather, you must remain with kindness and gentleness, and especially if they are elderly, and, and, and take care of them, and show them kindness, but at the same time remain firm upon Islam, that you worship Allah only, alone, because that's what's truly going to benefit you in the hereafter. That's the absolute is that we always worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we never abandon him in Tawheed. Shaykh Abdul Razak, Hafizullah ta'ala, he, he said, he began these verses, speaking about the ayat we, we just uh, spoke about, he said, he began these verses by enjoining upon man uh, kindness to his parents. He said, and we have enjoined on man goodness to parents. That's the first part of the verse that we just mentioned. And we have enjoined on man goodness to parents. The Sheikh said, his statement goodness entails goodness in every sense of the word, from the statements and actions. This means he interacts with his parents with good speech, good words, and speech which is appropriate for their status and befitting to their position. That's very important. It isn't just that we're kind to our parents, but we should also always maintain and re realize their status. And this is something that is, uh, for me, and having living, lived with the Arabs for quite some time, that I learned 
a lot, especially from those that are people of good manners. And of course, I'm only going to have companionship with uh, generally students of knowledge and people of good manners. That's just where I have been uh, blessed to be surrounded with in my travels and in the various places I've lived. And one thing I, I will say and I have learned is they give the utmost respect when they're people of goodness to their parents. Things as such as even certain words, certain terms, certain ways of dressing, they don't, it, it will never happen to their parents. They stand when their parents come in the room. They serve their parents. Their parents will never be the ones bringing the meal and so forth. They will bring the meal and their parents will sit and they will serve them. They will kiss their heads. Now these, these are great, these are, are maybe perhaps cultural ways of, uh, of interacting with your parents. Perhaps in many of our cultures, we would do it in a different manner. The point is, is that we maintain a high status for our parents. That we never take them out, even if we're good friends with them and we joke and, we, and so forth, but we never belittle their status. We always make sure that they're higher than us. And this is a reminder for myself and my brothers and sisters that always maintain, make sure that they are in the status that they deserve, getting the respect that they deserve and getting the love and uh, righteous treatment that they, res that, they, uh, that they deserve and call upon them in a righteous and kind way. Then the sheikh, he said, and he should interact with them by serving them aiding and assisting them and taking care of his parents' needs. This advice is general to include every type of kindness and every path of goodness. Allah said, and this is the same verse, but if they strive to make you join with me in worship anything as a partner of which you have no knowledge, then he said, meaning if the parents are upon polytheism and disbelief in Allah, and they strive to make their child associate partners with Allah, and disbelieve in Allah, and the meaning of make jihad or strive is to put forth great effort and continuously urge and request their child to return to polytheism and disbelief in Allah, the blessed and the exalted, he said, Allah said, but if they strive to make you join with me and worship anything, of which you have no knowledge. The statement of Allah the ex exalted, of which you have no knowledge, this is the necessary description for polytheism because no one has any knowledge which legitimizes polytheism. Polytheism, shirk, is false and there is no authentic knowledge to be found with, with uh, which legitimizes shirk. Thus the polytheists and those with corrupt beliefs have absolutely no proof or knowledge which proves what they are upon is correct. No one has proof for the correctness of polytheism because all of it is false, misguidance and corruption. This is similar to the statement of Allah the Exalted when he says, and whoever invokes besides Allah another deity for which he has no proof. This is a necessary description of shirk which it is never void of. And he said, meaning Allah, but if they strive, meaning that both they strive with you uh, to make you join in worship with me and others that which you have no knowledge, then obey them not. The Sheikh said, meaning if they call you to worship to, to polytheism and disbelief in Allah, then obey them not. Meaning do not obey your parents when they order you to associate partners with Allah the Exalted. And this is what we already discussed. And then he said, he said, then obey them not. And he, he did not say, then disobey them. Allahu Akbar. Look at this fayda. So here the shaykh is bringing up something very important regarding this ayah. And this is another reason why we love the ulama of Islam. Because of their ilm, their knowledge, their basira, their insight, their wisdom, their hikmah. All of these beautiful attributes Allah has favored them with. And we hold them to high status. But of course, we don't worship them. So here the Sheikh said, uh, he said about the verse, here Allah said, then obey them not. So when Allah says, then obey them not, 
in, in their shirk, when they're calling you to worship other than him. The sheikh said, and he did not say, meaning Allah did not say, then disobey them. So that, that means you obey them not in that affair, in them calling you to shirk. That does not mean you disobey them, meaning disobey them in their other commands that they call you to. Here's what the sheikh said. He says, this means it is required from the child to be good to his parents and interact with his parents in a kind manner. But he does not obey them in the polytheism and disbelief which they are calling him to. But if they request kindness or assistance from him, then it is upon him to obey them in that. This is clarified in Surah Al-Luqman, Allah the Blessed and, uh, and Exalted said, But if they both strive with you to make you join in worship with me, others, that of which you have no knowledge, then obey them not, but behave with them in the world kindly. Allahu Akbar. This, it's clear from the verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself in the Qur'an said that if they're calling you to shirk, don't obey them, but you're still respectful and kind and gentle with them. So that means you don't obey them in the commands. They're calling, if they keep saying, please, you need to come to church, you need to worship Jesus, you need to worship a rock, you need to worship an elephant, you need to worship Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam, wa alayhi salatu wasalam, ala Isa, that if they're calling you to worship anyone or anything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you do not obey them in that. But you're still, that does not mean you're disobedient to them in other, in other things, or that you disobey them, and that you're not kind to them anymore. Then he said, thus he commanded giving the parents good pan companionship in this world, meaning give consideration to their previous kindness and goodness shown to you. And the compassion of the mother and the money spent by the father. Do not forget this. Rather be diligent in showing them good, kind companionship. But do not obey them unrestrictedly in what they command you. In associating partners with Allah. He completed this verse with his statement. Then to me will be your return and I shall tell you what you used to do. This is an incentive as well as a threat. It is an incentive for those who are good to their parents that Allah, the glorified and exalted, will give him a great reward for that. And it is also a threat for the disbelieving parents if they remain upon their polytheism because of the punishment awaiting the disbelievers on the day of judgment. As for the one who is patient upon Tawheed, meaning monotheism, and faith, he is not affected by his parents and the polytheism they call him to, and he gives his parents good companionship in this world he will have a praiseworthy ending and a good result for this reason Allah said in the following verse and those who believe and do righteous deeds we will surely admit them among the righteous so this is imperative that we're kind and gentle to our parents that we obey them in that which is good that we are not disrespectful towards them that if they call us to disbelieve in Allah that we do not obey them in that, but we also are still kind and gentle and respectful to them. And that we strive in this, that we don't just give up. We don't say, oh, you made this, you were, uh, you, you called me to share khalas, I'm finished with you now, I'm going to cut ties. No, that's not how we should deal with our, our kin, but rather we should still be kind and gentle to them and we should still be respectful towards them and we should still spend upon them if they are in need and, and all of those other ways of goodness and kindness. And we ask of all the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.